Hi, folks. Uh, this is the be- where it all begins when anybody is doing uh, imaging. This is uh, one one of many uh, software that's available. This is SharpCap Pro uh, 3.2, and it's showing connected to the camera ASI 224, and. Uh, because I used this camera on a particular scope, uh, which was the 127 millimeter Maxitop, I chose the exposure settings of 0.617. And I used those exposure settings on all um, of the segments used to be stitched together that I'm going to illustrate for you. Not all 49 segments, of course, but I'm going to show one segment and show how I uh, show each phase of the imaging process or, or not imaging but uh, processing of each of those segments all right so the final re- result will be um, a wonderful image of the moon uh, and that uh, final image will be shown at the end of part two uh, of this presentation I'm going to go ahead and play the the actual video uh, from the capture on the on March 26th. Um, I had already achieved focus, and there's when you're when you're looking at focusing on the moon, you look at uh, of course the craters and the detail, but you also look at the edge, and you try to get this edge as fine a point as possible. And one of the ways to do that is to bring it. Uh, to zoom in to 200 percent and while that looks pretty fuzzy right there uh, you can uh, achieve focus when it's in high magnification Uh, and then once you have it as close as you to focus as you can uh, you can bring it down to uh, 100 percent and you're ready to image and all I've done here was take it out of focus for illustration purposes and then uh, bring it back in. And that jittery movement that you see is uh, my hand on the uh, focus knob on the telescope. And this sort of thing just, uh, uh, you can achieve uh, pretty good success through uh, practice. Um, and uh, it just takes a little bit of time. But here we go, we have a gorgeous image of the moon, and I'm just sizing things, not really sizing things, but looking at where I want to uh, start imaging on the moon. And uh, this scope is a wonderful scope, but it has such a narrow view uh, that I had to use 49 segments of the moon. Uh, and I do that because you need overlap. You want overlap on all of the images, all the image segments uh, so that uh, uh, you don't skip anything any area of the moon so what you saw there is I chose a thousand frames to stack and if you can see in the lower left uh, you can see I'm capturing uh, the images at 18 frames per second and on the lower right you're going to see the green progress bar Uh, and once I am done with that capture you're going to see a banner at the top here. So SharpCap Pro is a uh, is a wonderful software for both uh, just doing lunar or solar system imaging as as well as capturing uh, galaxies and nebula and things like that. Um, it is uh, priced at about $15 a year and its author Robin Grover is uh, provides excellent um, uh, customer support. So here you see that the uh, capture is completed, and this is pretty much how I did each segment of the moon using SharpCap Pro. And once uh, I, I got all the captures in, um, I ran each segment um, file through. Uh, software called AutoStacker, which we will cover next. Okay, so after we've completed all the imaging that we're going to uh, gather uh, during our session, 
or after we've com or after I completed all 49 segments, I then use um, a free software called AutoStacker to initially stack uh, each uh, the data in each of the segments that I took. So I go in here and open up um, a folder and a file that I've pre-selected for this presentation. I basically, open it up. And we have an image of one of those segments here. And to uh, the way I've used it for all those 49 segments, I make sure that surface is selected because we're not we don't have the full disk of the um, moon here. We only did a segment. And I also ensure that uh, improved tracking is selected. And then I hit um, the analyze. And basically, um, well, um, before I even hit that, let's, pay, let's talk about this uh, stabilization anchor. What this does is, um, as I said, I have a thousand frames of each segment um, recorded. This anchor will um, force all the other frames uh, to align itself with this anchor. That kind of gives you an idea of just how powerful Auto Stacker it is uh, for, as a stacking software. So we have to analyze um, these thousand frames and the result will be a chart that is used to give us um, further alignment and stacking options. Um, and uh, I'm going to pause uh, the recording here and once it's done we'll get back. Okay so AutoStackard has completed the analysis and we're ready to uh, populate some blocks and I've already done that here based on what I see in each column. And again uh, this really isn't a how-to on any uh, of the software that I used. Um, there's other videos out there that are uh, much more involved uh, that I wish to get into for the purposes of this video. It's just showing you what I do to get the images I get. Alright, so that being said, I take a look at the data where most of it is in my mind and I go 55%, 53, 60, and 45. All right. Um, I choose the TIFF file format, so I'm going to have four files, one for each of these blocks. Okay. I'm going to clear this. And then what this does here is it places a grid, an alignment point where each of these points um, will cause the percentages that I have listed here uh, to be stacked against these alignment points. All right, so now I'm able, I'm ready to stack. All right, and this can take several minutes, so I'm I'm going to pause the video, and once we are back um, or completed with Auto Stacker, I'll have four files, and we can start talking about Registacks. Okay, so Registax has completed, and we've com we've also stacked, uh, and we have um, some data ready for us. So one neat feature of Auto Stacker is uh, you go into File, and you select Show Output Directory, and it will take you to where your data is. So notice that I have four folders here, one for each of the columns that we talked about here. Okay, So I've got to go in to each folder, rename this file, and all I'm doing is put putting these numbers here. So I'm going to put um, 45 at the end of this, hit enter, and I'm going to move it to the parent folder, which is this right here. So when I go back into it, there it is.
do the same with each of these folders. And it will come become clear um, in, in later when I start using Registax because I'm going to stack these four files. All right, and here they are. Okay, it's just easier to have them here when I'm using Registax. And here is the software. And this software has been around a long time. You could say it was the the daddy of stacking programs at least as far as most people are aware all right so now I use select and I have these files here and I highlight all of them and I open them up all right and I've got to create some alignment points I don't need whole lot but auto, while auto stacker will automatically do this uh, I would just soon do this manually in Registax. I don't need a lot because there's just four files and I use this slider here to bring it over to the strongest alignment points and there'll be a few remaining fewer remaining because these are the stronger alignment points. So I just go to align and I go to limit. Okay, and then I go to stack. Now you need to understand I've done this for you know 49 segments of the moon. Uh, Registax allows you to save a scheme uh, so you don't have to go through all of these manually each time you want to stack a segment. So I'm going to load the scheme and soon you'll see this thing really become more detailed. Alright, and here we go. The craters become a lot more find the dust lines are far more far clearer and we I select the do wall to make sure everything in this image has the same effect all right and then I hit save image and I just removed the last two numbers on here and I go with RG or Registax. I can close this out and I'm going to look at the file here. All right. Now, since I have this file, this, this image open, you can see some of the detail here. Okay. These are called artifacts, and we're going to have to crop these out, um, which we'll do in the second part of this presentation using uh, Photoshop. So that concludes uh, part one of this presentation. I hope you find it helpful. Uh, feel free to ask any questions along the way um, about this, uh, good or bad, or or um, what you'd rather have would have liked to have seen. Is this too detailed? I'm trying not to get it too detailed, but um, it's that's harder than I thought that would be. But I hope you've enjoyed the video.